So you're considering starting testosterone replacement therapy, but you're concerned that it could be forever. You've heard that once you start taking exogenous testosterone, that your natural production will be suppressed and lowered forever. And not only that, you've heard that men who have gone on testosterone replacement therapy have become infertile forever. Well, I'm Dr. Michael Moeller, and I've helped hundreds of guys use testosterone replacement therapy to optimize their levels and feel better. And today, we're going to break down these concerns. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. And if you've gone through testosterone replacement therapy, starting and stopping, I'd be very interested to hear your feedback in the comments. As in my opinion, a lot of these are myths, but we are going to go ahead and break them down. So let's start with the first question. If I start testosterone replacement therapy, will my endogenous, the testosterone produced in my body, be forever lower and will I be forever dependent on the exogenous testosterone, meaning testosterone from outside of the body. Now, if we take a case study, let's say you have a 35 year old man and his testosterone levels are 325 milligrams per deciliter. And what's interesting to note is that's not typically diagnosed as hypogonadism compared to the modern day reference ranges, but just 10 years ago, under 350 was considered low testosterone. Side note, we'll chat about that another time. So this gentleman who is 35 years old, his testosterone is 300 125. Now, our question is, if this man goes on testosterone replacement therapy, and let's say he goes up to 1,000, and he sits there for five years, and he decides to come off of testosterone replacement therapy, will his levels ever come, one, back on at all, and two, will they be as high as they were before or possibly lower? Well, a couple of things could happen. First thing, and this is what I actually see in most of my patients, is that when guys come to me and Again, they're 35 with a level of 325. They have a lot of lifestyle factors and many things in their lives are snowballing them in a negative direction, leading to lower and lower testosterone. They have no motivation. They have no drive, no libido. So they don't go to the gym. They don't eat properly. They don't sleep well. They do all the things that lower testosterone. And so even when we work really, really hard to help them out of that, it becomes very difficult for them to naturally raise their testosterone levels. So once we put them on testosterone and we raise their levels up to, let's say, 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams per deciliter, most often we talk in free testosterone, but for the sake of today's video, we're going to talk in total. It makes it easier. What we find is then that guy puts on muscle mass. He loses body fat. He starts to sleep better. He starts to eat better. He starts doing all of these things that will help him have higher natural testosterone. Now, why he is on testosterone? Yes, his natural production will be shut off. The brain has been asking for 325. His signal from the brain, FSH and LH, goes down to his testes. He produces this 325. Now, when we come in and we give him exogenous testosterone to raise those levels up to, say, 1,000 to 1,200, then his brain goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. I asked for 325. I now have 1,200. Let's shut this down. I have more than what I am asking for. And when that happens, the brain signal, FSH and LH, LH go to zero. And then the signal that is supposed to go to the testes is not there. And therefore the testes do not produce testosterone. Also, FSH and LH are important for mostly FSH for producing sperm, which we'll chat about in a little bit. But yes, this does shut down a guy's sperm production and he does have testicular shrinkage and a decrease in ejaculatory volume. Again, we'll chat more about that in a minute. But when this guy, say at 35, his total testosterone is at 1200 and he's there for say five years, he puts on muscle mass. He does the things we chatted about earlier. And he says, you know what, doc, I think it's time. I'd like to come off for, for whatever reason. And what I have found in my practice, when guys become more metabolically healthy and they come off testosterone, their levels not only come back online, they actually come back higher. So this guy at 35, whose total number was 325, after he comes off, start producing six to 700. Now I know what you're saying. Well, that's not true. Da, da, da. I know I've heard this from countless people in the comments, but I've treated hundreds of guys and I've seen this time and time again, because you hear the myth. Hey, if you do testosterone, you will one, become permanently infertile. Two, your your levels will never come back to the levels that they were before. And three, you're going to be dependent on this thing ultimately forever. Now, I personally, in my clinical practice, have never seen this. Two, I've asked other doctors who do this, and I've never heard a doctor tell me that they've seen this. And three, I've asked them, have they heard from another doctor of a case where they've seen this? And they haven't. Now, this is just testosterone replacement therapy and a therapeutic dose of, say, under 200 milligrams per week. So maybe that happens when you're dealing with high amounts of anabolic steroids or other usage. 
bunch, but I haven't seen a guy who we've known to be fertile, who had an intact HPA access, get on testosterone replacement therapy and cause permanent damage. Now, this also though doesn't mean if a guy is 35, what naturally happens with testosterone as a guy, his natural testosterone production tends to go down by about 1% a year. So most often when a guy is say 18 or 20, his testosterone is hopefully 900 to 1200, and then it's dropping by one-ish percent a year until he gets older. So say by the time he's 70, his testosterone then is 400, 500, 300. It's slowly going down. Side note, what I see all the time in my clinical practice now is plenty of 20 and 30 year old men who have testosterone levels of two or 300. So one would even think if you take a 35 year old male and you put him on testosterone, yeah, in five years, his levels would be lower because they would have been lower anyways. So then we come to the next question of like, well, is this something I have to do forever? Will I be dependent on? Now we have to sit back and hopefully you've chatted about this with your doctor. You've looked at the risks and the benefits of doing testosterone replacement therapy and thought this through. Because at this point, if you're a 35 year old male and you have a testosterone level of 325, often you don't feel great. Your libido sucks. You have no motivation or drive or energy to do anything. Often I hear from guys is like, hey, I have to pick doc. Like I can do maybe two or three of these four or five things in my life. Meaning like I can work out, I can do well at work, I can play with my kids, or I can spend time with my wife. I usually have enough energy for two, maybe three of those, but I just don't have the ump. And that is a sign of having low testosterone. So when a guy comes to me and says, this is what's going on. Yeah, let's raise your testosterone up. Now, feeding back to these questions, often these guys go, well, why don't we do something else first before doing testosterone replacement therapy? And that is often what I do with my guys in my clinical practice. I always want to try and optimize diet and lifestyle and metabolic factors first, trying some supplements, zinc, magnesium, et cetera, before going over to testosterone replacement therapy. The example that I usually use with my guys is they come to me and they say, hey, I have a five mile commute. Right now, it takes me one hour to walk to work with a slight jog every morning, right? Going five miles an hour. And I tell them, I go, hey, look, we can do the natural things and you can go from running, you know, five miles an hour and run those five miles and say, you know, 30, 40 minutes. Like that's totally doable. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take you three to four months of really hard training and making sure that you have the motivation, you have the drive, and that you can commit to running every day very hard to make yourself better. And that's what I look at as the natural route. Now, the more kind of in-between route, and it's a little bit more controversial, is using things like HCG or enclomiphene. They're not as good as testosterone replacement therapy. But often guys look at them and say, well, hey, these work slightly different. They're not the same as using testosterone replacement therapy. Why don't I try them first? And I'd say, well, you can. My example is that's kind of like giving you a bicycle. 100%. If we put you on enclomiphene, your levels tomorrow will be higher. What enclomiphene does is it blocks the signal on the brain to estrogen. And so your body upregulates gonadotropin releasing hormone, FSH and LH, and then you produce more testosterone. So we do on blood level, see men's testosterone go up. They often do have some form of symptom resolution not as good as testosterone replacement therapy. So yes, it's like giving you a bicycle. Now you're riding that bicycle at 12 to 15 miles an hour. And then that hour long commute is something closer to 15 minutes. Now, what I often then say is testosterone replacement therapy is like, dude, it's just getting in your car. You're driving 60 miles an hour. You're getting to work in five minutes. Now you're right. You're not using your natural production when you're doing that. If you have kind of a skin bag bias and you're looking at this from a, well, that's not natural. Do I have to do this forever? It's like, you don't have to do anything forever. You don't have to drive your car to work every day. You can ride your bike, you can run. And yes, though, if you are driving your car every day, your bike time will go down. Your running time will go down. Now, with that being said, you can stop driving your car at any minute. And within the next couple of days, you can start running and driving your bike and things will go back to normal. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to suck for a little bit. That is the thing. If you're on testosterone replacement therapy and you're doing injections, yeah, the first couple of weeks when you come off the injections, your body's level are going to have to plummet in order for your own HBA axis to turn back on and then have your levels raise up again. So it is a bit of a process. And that's why I often do a give what's called a, we call it PCT, post psychotherapy in the bodybuilding world. It's just the idea that, hey, you're coming off of testosterone. Why don't we use enclomiphene? Why don't we use HCG to get your bodies boosted and started again? Another controversial take is I don't think that's 100% necessary. I've seen plenty of guys who are on testosterone replacement therapy come off and go completely cold turkey and their levels come online perfectly fine. So then moving on to the fertility 
durability question. There's a joke in the testosterone replacement therapy world and the bodybuilding world is what do you call a man who uses testosterone replacement therapy for birth control? You call him a dad. So there are plenty of men who are on testosterone replacement therapy who are fertile. Now, with that being said, as a clinician, if I am concerned about your fertility, I would say go ahead and think that you are infertile while you're on TRT if you're trying to conceive. So if you're trying to have a child and you're using testosterone replacement therapy, most often you will have difficulty. Now, that doesn't mean you can't run ACG while on testosterone replacement therapy. That does work. And the reason that works is because ACG goes to your testes and tells your testes to produce sperm. In my clinical experience, and again, I'd love to hear comments from people out there who have used things such as enclomiphene or gonadarellin. I have not seen them work. And I think the issue with both of those is enclomiphene is working on the brain by antagonizing, and it's just not strong enough to overcome the feedback loop that happens with testosterone replacement therapy. Now, you could think that the enclomiphene is working, but in the guy that it's working, he probably was already fertile before using the enclomiphene. Like he was the guy that was on TRT who was fertile anyways. Like I've not seen a guy who has gone on testosterone replacement therapy and his sperm counts came back low, use enclomiphene or use gonadarellin and their fertility comes back online. The problem with gonadarellin, in my opinion, is that its half-life is just so short. So again, it can't overcome the lack of FSH and LH being delivered over a longer period of time. So with that being said, again, I have seen guys be on testosterone replacement therapy for 10, 15, 20 years, come off and still have viable sperm and get their partner pregnant and then go back on therapy. And then, like I said earlier, you can then decide if you want to run testosterone replacement therapy and you're concerned about fertility, you can run ACG. The issue with ACG is that for a lot of men, it gives them side effects like acne, being irritated, and even increasing their sexual function to a part of a place where even premature ejaculation is there. It increases sexual sensitivity and that can be too much for some guys. So there's nuance in all these things. So you definitely want to be working with a practitioner who's gone through all of this and can understand the nuance for every individual situation. So after bringing all this data together, you can kind of understand why actually a lot of guys who get on testosterone replacement therapy do tend to be on it for quite a while, if not forever. And that's because often they feel better on it. And if they come off, like I said earlier, your levels can be slightly higher than they were before. But part of the reason guys go on testosterone replacement therapy is to feel better. They're in a place they have low symptoms. Like I have guys that come to me and they're depressed. They have no libido, erectile dysfunction. Their relationships are a mess. Their career is a mess. And once you optimize their testosterone, it can greatly help with all those things. Now, it's not a magic bullet, but often it can get guys going in the right direction. Now, if you decide you want to stop that therapy, you are risking then going back to where you were or slightly lower or slightly higher. There's going to be nuance like we talked about. So wrapping everything up, no TRT doesn't have to be a forever thing. I've never seen a guy become permanently infertile from it. And I've never seen it turn off a guy's HPA access to the point where he could never produce testosterone again. Now, if I'm wrong, I'd love to hear feedback from people who have maybe even had this happen. And I'd be interested to hear this if this has happened to you or from someone that you know. And I'd love to hear the details about that as it would be new to me. So I hope you found today's information useful. If you like this, I think that you would like following this video next. Thank you for stopping by. And until next time, stay vigilant, my friends, and God bless.